This is Nusra Abdul Kareem speaking on behalf of Kareem Iga. On this channel, we love to explore different aspects of our lives. And so today, I'll be looking at education, specifically the scientists and teachers of the past. In this video, I'll be showing you footage that I recorded a few weeks ago in an Islamic museum in Turkey. The museum focuses on scholars like Abdullah ibn Sina, born in Iran 1980 AD, who is commonly known as the father of medicine, chemistry, physics and philosophy during the medieval Islamic era. Furthermore, it also focuses on many other teachers and philosophers which laid the foundation of scientific and mathematical research today and influenced the development of humankind in society today. The museum contents amazed me and I was so proud to look at our Islamic history preserved in time. So sit comfortably and enjoy. Nusina was born in 1980, 1980 in a village uh, and during his short life 57 years he produced hundreds of books and studies. So as you can see here, he has many of his books um, about this, um, things to do with science, philosophy, anatomy of the body. It's a very broad subject. And he was a very smart person. He was um, so he was philosophical and scientific studies, and he was also a statesman. And so he worked on polymaths, philosophy, medicine, astronomy, and music, chemistry, and mathematics. So, however, he mostly focused on medicine. So, as you can see here, he was Ibn Sina was an, actually an amazing man because he was the first person to look at the circulation of blood around the body and if you follow the lights over here you can see it shows the blood entering the heart here leaving it deoxygenated and returning again oxygenated that's what the blue and the red light show so even though he was born 1980 and he had nearly not an advantage in medicine as we know today he actually worked this out and he even looked at the digestive tract and labeled it you can see there are many labels in Arabic here and here and here so he's a very smart man Okay, so over here we enter the normal chemistry and physics side of the standard history. So this here is a typical handbag, which is the, what a, physic, a physician in the time in the 16th century, even earlier, carried to work. So you can see his bag here, which he carried, it has lots of his herbs, his medicines, his chemicals, and all of that stuff. And it even has his tools here. So it's quite sure that even back very long time ago, there was still a lot of advanced equipment used, which even some of the equipment here you still see used today, like such as the spatula, you still see used. You can still see, I don't know, like the hook thing, you can see that in like dental care, things like that. So you can see that. Yeah, so even though this is literally the starting, all it was is developed from this. It actually started off like this and it was developed later on by other, by other scientists. Other people like that. So here, this is again more chemistry. And what's amazing is that these scales now are still used today, even though they are from a long time ago. Let's see, they are from. So this is a laboratory device. So this is the different uh, chemicals they had at the time. So they had um, copper carbonate. Um, they had things like. Um, coral, so carbonate, uh, calcium carbonate here, they have here calcium carbonate again. So this is actually, this is incredible because they either still use and based a lot of chemistry around their chemicals and things like that. So this here you can see is 
what they do their um, distillation in, which again we still do nowadays, and we still use the same principle. So everything here is literally just being developed. It's not being made new. It's all it already was part of the Islamic empire. It was just developed when people came over and colonized and things like that. So then we'll move on to this slide. This is again a distillation of so similar to this, which is larger. And this is actually this is virtually the exact same as is news now. So you can see that the water is boiled, it comes over here, then it's condensed and then forms a liquid again over here. So this is again another fractional distillation or simple distillation either one, which is still used today, which is actually incredible. So here you can see uh, um, Although Pop Raj you know, has a chemistry, a part of chemistry, he was called Jabal al Hayal. He also wrote enormous number of various works. And the oldest new recipe is nitric acid. So nitric acid, which is I'm pretty sure everyone's heard of nitric acid, he actually was the person who formed it. And she is the person who kind of offered the formulation to actually produce it. Here you can see again he um, he saw the values turning ordinary substances into valuable like gold, and he also um, he's the person who offered the formulation of the production of steel and purification of metals. I think that is probably one of the most important discoveries in all of history, and it was a very long time ago by this person called Jabar al Hayab, and he literally the steel which is all, all the time now. The same steel on bridges, um, cars, equipment like that was actually made but formulated by this man here in the Islamic Empire a very long time ago. Obviously, we looked at a diagram further over there, which is showing a similar diagram. As you can see in the video, Ibn Sina clearly displays the fetus residing in a uterus. This is an amazing representation, which is scientifically accurate and is one of the first detailed diagrams of a woman's pregnancy. The image shows the progression of science and medicine, which stem from this very photo. Ibn Sina was also the first scholar, teacher and scientist to distinguish between the pulse of a pregnant woman being fast and soft rather than the usual slow and hard. Although the diagram is, isn't as sophisticated as today's models, the finer details are clearly present in both, hence evidently displaying the importance and intelligence of this amazing scholar Ibn Sina. Females, males, see the skeletal system, the muscular system over here is quite interesting. So everything that we know today and know now, like this is almost a, probably the exact, almost the exact same as the skeletal system that we follow today. Same for the muscular system here, it's very similar to what we actually use today, as in we still today. So it just shows that this was discovered a long time ago, just developed after the and part of the Islamic Empire.
go to one part. Okay, next thing we go to this. Uh, this is a quite, although it's quite simple as of now, back in the day this would have been quite a um, advanced technology and this is here is for the roof of the but so it's actually used to do I don't know how exactly yeah so it's used the person will do this which, and it will then pump water from a tank into a, a barrel and then so you can be used as you can see here the water being pumped over here so this is quite interesting as well and then we'll move over this side I'm really interested. This is the first ever GPS device used. This is the first ever GPS device used. So although GPS is used all over the world all the time now, in, in phones, in planes, in things like that, this is one of the first devices used to help tell the direction. And it was used in the Ottoman Empire many, many years ago, centuries ago. And this just shows you how smart the people were, even though they didn't have the resources, they were still able to make something that revolutionized the world. There's a smaller version over here. Uh, over here there's a smaller version, but this one I think is really interesting. So you can maybe put it on north. So you choose the direction you want to point it at, like this. You then turn it like this, and then it will tell you the direction of which you're looking at. So here maybe 60 degrees this way, or I know, maybe 7 to 10 degrees that way. So as you can see, it's quite interesting over here. And this is just showing you that something like this actually transforms into something that we used to do like this. So it just shows you the contrast and uh, the way things have uh, developed over time. So it's gone from quite a large device like this to something like that. Okay. So the small projector you use in school and in your everyday life, this was actually one of the first ever projectors you used. So you just move it across like this. So say the angle stops, say the angle stops over here, they will just move, they will move it to wherever they're trying to measure the angle. Then after using some more maths or um, any I don't know like algebraic calculations, they actually find out the angle they want. So it's quite interesting. Yes, very interesting. This is the a, a video, let's say, of the Arab Turkish areas on all the great sultans and these historic books. Look at that. Unfortunately, I might have to take it out. 
But they look stunning. Oh, they're fake. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Hey ho, we all know what they mean. Uh, today is Friday the 7th of August and I'm here in Istanbul, Turkey in an um, Islamic history museum which is mostly about science and technology in the Islamic uh, empire in the past. So this first um, experiment I'm looking at is called the Dark Room and the name of the experiment which is by Ibn al Hassan, proves that the energy of light as light from any object possesses uh, through a pinhole. This is an image reverse this is the operating principle of the camera and the vision, so quite interesting. And this is from uh, quite a while ago, from 15, 17 pictures I found showing it, but obviously it's not from about before then. So that's, this is the first thing. And then you look, it's just trying to show you how, if you were to look inside the whole thing here, you'll see that the, the image here is turned around. It's quite interesting. Okay, and next year, this is, this is called Al Zahar's problem, and it refers to the problem given a light source, a spherical mirror, and find the point of the mirror where the light will be reflected to the eye of the observer. So, this is an equipment used to solve a, um, a problem in the past, and it's quite amazing, I think, because it's, um, it's really complex, especially for the, the time that they were in, it's quite smart as well. Uh, I think the person was called Al, -Hazi, Al Hazim when he made it. Okay. Um, next one, this is similar to um, this device here, it also has light but it's not working though. However, this is about the theory of rainbows and it's a simple mechanism that shows the refraction of light and the formation of rainbows in a global environment. So, even though rainbows were seen for many, many years, it was the Islamic empire who actually worked out what they were and understood the whole science behind rainbows. And they use um, equipment like this to work it out, which is quite amazing. Next, we have moonlight observation device. And it refers to the experiment device, the al Hassan moonlight. And um, he explains thoroughly how this happens using this device. I think he looks through here, maybe use um, other microscopic devices to get. It's basically like the first telescope to be used to study the moon. There's a detailed image of the moon over there as well. Okay, so moving on, we have this. This doesn't have a name, but it's, oh, this is a uh, quite interesting as well. That is sick. This is just showing you the actual, um, oh, it's really cool, the actual um, equipment they used to, used to do stuff like this thing. So this is made from a very long time ago. It's still quite effective to, you know, to use collect the balls. The balls are quite far away, so you can't really do it here, but you get the point. So this is just showing you how advanced they were, even though it was such a long time ago. And then we have this. I hope this was used for the sewing machine. So it uses a motor just to turn it around, so it's quite like a story, I think. It's quite interesting as well. So these two are just showing you the equipment they used to use at the time. And then now we move on to... So this is six cylinder pump. Born in Damascus in 1526, Dag al-Din was an Ottoman polymer, all four many books in various subjects, including astronomy, clocks, engineering, mathematics and mechanics. He also provided valuable um, knowledge on hydraulic mechani mechanisms, as we see over there. And um, so he made things like water pumps, um, he made things like a lapsa system, and to carry water. So it's quite interesting. This is just showing the opposite. So it's quite interesting. Uh, 
So this is what I'd see. This is what that description of air was talking about. I don't know if it works. Yeah, it works. This is just showing how, if you can see it closer, there's actually water. I'm just showing you how water is removed of the pump, as you can see here. Um...